Robert L. Pamprin was a 33-year-old engineer at Convair Astronautics Division. Not only was he a man of science and precision, he was also an adventurer at heart. Residing at the Bayard Place in Pacific Beach, Robert's life was a blend of technical blueprints and the vast expanse of the ocean. His wife Carolyn often watched him from their home, her heart swelling with pride and at times a hint of worry. Growing up, Robert had always been drawn to water. His prowess as a swimmer was well known, and his stint as a lifeguard only solidified his reputation. But for Pamperin, it wasn't always just about swimming. It was the thrill of freediving and the allure of the mysteries that lay beneath the waves that truly captivated him. For years, he had been a skin diver, exploring the underwater world with a passion that few could match. The sun was high in the sky on June 14th of 1959, casting shimmering reflections on the water of La Jolla Cove, California. The picturesque alligator head stood sentinel, its rocky facade overlooking the vast expanse of the Pacific. The cove, with its azure waters, was a haven for divers, and that day was no different. Pamprin, who at this point was an experienced freediver with a penchant for abalone, was exploring the underwater world with his diving partner, Gerald Lehrer. The two had shared countless dives, their camaraderie evident in the silent and efficient way that they communicated beneath the waves. The ocean's depths held many treasures on that day, and the pair had hopes of nabbing some of them in the form of elusive mollusks. As they dove deeper, the world around them transformed. The play of light through the water painted a surreal picture, with marine life darting in and out of the rocky crevices. But amidst this serenity, little did the pair know that the unexpected lurked. Suddenly, a shadow loomed large, cutting through the water's dappled sunlight. Gerald, who was just a few meters away from Pamperin, would suddenly hear a muffled cry for help, which is when he would turn to see a sight that would haunt him forever. Lyra watched in horror as his friend was being lifted out of the water, his silhouette framed against the sun, and the massive creature, its size dwarfing a helpless pamperin, had seized him between its jaws. From a distance, onlooker William Abbotts, perched on a rock formation, watched as the horrific scene unfolded, his heart pounding and adrenaline rushing as the once tranquil atmosphere of the cove was evidently shattered. A brave and courageous Lyra, in a desperate attempt to save his friend, would then swim as fast as he could towards Pamperin, but of course Lyra was no match for one of the ocean's most formidable predators, as the massive white shark was relentless, causing Lyra to lose hope with each passing second. The struggle was intense as the water churned with bubbles and a growing crimson hue. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, it was all over, and the great white, with Pamperin in its mouth, would disappear into the abyss, only leaving behind a haunting silence. News of the attack would spread like wildfire, with local authorities and divers combing the area. But Robert Pamperin was never found, and the cove with its beauty and allure would go on to hold a somber memory, a reminder of the unpredictable nature of the ocean, as well as the mysteries it conceals. After Gerard Lehrer and William Abbotts had witnessed the horrifying incident, 10 scuba divers were sent out to look for the corpse. But unfortunately, their efforts were unsuccessful, and they were not able to find any remains of Robert, and much like some other shark attacks that we've covered, sometimes the shark finishes off every single bit of the human, and it's not always a case where a shark bites somebody and then just lets them bleed out, and it's a case of mistaken identity. Now this is not to bash sharks, but these things can happen and precautions must be taken. On a cloudy Sunday afternoon on December 7th of 1952, the Pacific Ocean off Point Olan, known to locals as Lover's Point in Monterey County, California, was anything but romantic. The waters were murky, with visibility reduced to a mere one or two meters thanks to the aftermath of an overnight rainstorm and a dense plankton bloom. The sea temperature was a chilly 12.7 degrees Celsius, and the unpredictable underwater world, as usual, shrouded in mystery. Barry Wilson, a spirited 16-year-old, was out swimming with his friend Bruckner Brady Jr., who was a year younger. The two were about 25 meters from the shore, with the water around them plunging to a depth of about 5 fathoms. As they swam, the unexpected would suddenly happen, as a shadowy figure emerged from the depths, targeting Wilson. Brady, witnessing the horror, swam as fast as he could toward his friend, unsheathing his knife in a desperate attempt to fend off the shark. He would then attempt continuous stabs at the predator, but the knife was soon knocked from his grasp. Resorting to his bare hands, Brady fought desperately to free his friend, and after what felt like an eternity, the shark would finally release its grip and disappear into the opaque. From the shore, John C. Bassford, a bystander, had a clear view of the unfolding drama. He watched in horror as Barry was lifted out of the water by the force of the attack, desperately trying to fend off the shark, as the water around them turned a bloody shade of red. 
Members of the Sea Otter Dive Club, who were nearby, would then rush to the rescue. They placed Wilson on an inner tube, trying to get him to safety, but the shark was relentless, making several passes at the injured boy, even as rescuers tried to fend it off. And by the time they reached shore, it was tragically too late, as Barry's injuries proved fatal, with the most severe being a massive wound on his right thigh. The attack was attributed once again to a great white shark, estimated to be around 4 meters in length. The sun was casting a gentle glow over Surf Beach on that fateful day, a picturesque spot nestled in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hamlet of Surf. Located just west of Lompoc on the Vandenberg Air Force Base in Santa Barbara County, California, the beach was a favorite among locals and tourists alike. But on the fateful morning of October 22, 2010, the peaceful ambiance of the beach was disrupted. Lucas McCain Ransom, a vibrant 19-year-old from Romulan, California, was out on the waves riding his red bodyboard. A junior in chemical engineering at UC Santa Barbara, Lucas was passionate about the ocean as well as the thrill of bodyboarding. Donning his black swim fins and a black and red board leash, he also looked every bit the seasoned surfer. Accompanying him was his close friend, 20-year-old Matthew Garcia, and the two were by all accounts inseparable, previously having shared many adventures both in and out of the water. As they rode the 8-10 to 10 foot waves, the atmosphere was exhilarating. Little did the pair realize, however, that they were being watched by an unexpected guest from the waters just below them. A few moments then passed when, without a warning, a massive shadow suddenly surged from the depths straight toward Ransom. The helpless 19-year-old was then gripped by a force so powerful that it lifted him off his board. Garcia, who was just a few feet away, watched in horror as a massive white shark, estimated to be around 17 to 18 feet in length, clamped its jaws onto Lucas's left leg. A desperate struggle between life and death would then ensue. Garcia, who at this point was driven by sheer adrenaline, would bravely attempt to reach his friend. But the force of the waves and the sheer intimidating size of the shark made this extremely difficult. As the water turned a haunting shade of red, Ransom's also red bodyboard would then rise to the surface, painting a picture that seemed like it was straight out of a horror movie. Garcia, with a heavy heart, would manage to bring Ransom to the shore with the help of two witnesses. And despite their attempts at rescue, his injuries would prove too severe, as he had sustained a massive bite to his left leg, leading to severe blood loss. The aftermath of the tragedy was profound. Vandenberg Air Force Base would close Surf Beach and its neighboring beaches for 72 hours. The community mourned the loss of a bright young soul, and Lucas's memory was immortalized with a Lucas Ransom Memorial Scholarship at UC Santa Barbara. The scholarship, a beacon of hope, is annually awarded to students who embodied Lucas's passion for helping others and making a difference. The ocean with its vast expanse and mysterious depths is home to a myriad of creatures, each playing a unique role in maintaining the balance of its intricate ecosystems. Among these, sharks, who are often misunderstood and feared, stand out as apex predators, ensuring the health and vitality of our oceans. Despite the frightful nature of this documentary, it's important we don't paint a dark picture of these magnificent ocean predators. Sharks play a pivotal role as apex predators in maintaining the balance of marine ecosystems, they regulate the populations of species below them in the food chain, which are quite a plenty, ensuring a healthy diversity of marine life. Also, by preying on the weak and the sick, sharks help to strengthen the gene pools of their prey, leading to healthier populations of marine creatures. Not to mention they're also known as the guardians of the coral reefs. They indirectly protect these reefs, which are vital for marine biodiversity, as the loss of sharks can lead to an increase in larger predatory fish, such as groupers, who in turn play their role by feeding on herbivores that keep algae in check. And without these herbivores, algae can overtake coral reefs, leading to their decline. It's also important to note that the presence or absence of sharks can have ripple effects on local economies. For instance, the decline in bay scallops due to the loss of sharks once led to the closure of a fishery in North Carolina, not only demonstrating the interconnectedness of marine life, but also its impact on human livelihoods. On the flip side, living sharks can boost local economies through ecotourism. For instance, in places like the Bahamas, a single live reef shark can be worth up to $250,000 due to dive tourism, compared to a one-time value of $50 if caught by a fisherman. Not to mention sharks also serve as indicators of ocean health, which means a decline in shark populations can signal larger issues with marine ecosystems, such as overfishing or habitat degradation. So with all this in mind, it's important that we note that while sharks can pose dangers to humans, it's essential to understand that unprovoked attacks are rare and most sharks are in fact not interested in humans as prey. So by playing our role and understanding and respecting their behavior, as well as their habitats, it's certainly possible for a healthy coexistence between us and these prehistoric ocean predators. 
If this episode piqued your interest, then our previous episode, featuring one of the most brutal shark attacks of all time, is likely to do the same. You can find it on the end screen of this video.